Hey guys, how's it going? This is a video I never thought I would end up making. But hey, here we are. So, about a month ago, I emailed someone from Bandai asking if they could put me in contact with someone from Biking to see if I could convince them to fix and balance some things in My Hero 1's Justice 2. But sadly, they couldn't. But before all hope was lost, I received another email from Bandai saying that if I wanted to make a list of all the things that need fixing and changing, they could 100% guarantee that it would get to someone at Biking. King. This honestly surprised me. They could have easily left it and said, no sorry, we can't put you in contact with someone at Biking and just leave it at that. But they went out of their way to send the second email, so thank you Bandai. Anyway, as soon as I got this news, I knew I couldn't do this on my own, so I asked the community for help. But before we get into exactly what we changed, I just want to give a big thank you to Ichunka for helping me format the document and wording it in a way that wouldn't be disrespectful to biking. And thank you to the community for all coming together and helping with the patch notes to make the best update we could with what we had. With all that out of the way, let's get into this. So my original plan after hearing we could come up with a balance patch was to go full out and fix, buff and nerf everybody. But after talking with Ichunka since he He's done the exact same thing with Demon Slayer in the past. He told me that if we add too many things to the patch, it's going to be ignored. So we scaled it back to only the most important things that needed fixing. Then we started working on the document, and that started with a small message. On behalf of the My Hero Ones Justice 2 community, I would like to say thank you for the continued support of this game. You could have easily left this game as it was, but through the balancing and additional characters you've added over the years, you have made this game a viable competitive arena fighter with an amazing community that is still active to this day. While we understand that you are busy working on My Hero Ultra Rumble, we would love an opportunity to show you some changes that we as a community think would benefit the game. We have split this document up into two chapters, starting with Assist Meta and then Character Changes. We made sure to focus on only what needs to be changed the most. We wish you the best with ongoing and future projects, keep up the good work and thank you for reading us. Assist Matter Currently, the way assists work, they are an extremely good tool for neutral, sometimes to the point of being busted, because they can be held there even if you get hit. The assist used to be used for cool combo extensions and neutral. Now, with the current assist meta, which is dominated by characters like Kirishima, Stain, and Midnight. Now assists are used to either play neutral for you or make you safe. A good example of this is doing an unsafe move and calling Kirishima, which is going to make you safe since he is armored and does big damage damage if he hits you. There is a community balance patch on PC called Remix. This makes assists go away when players get hit to get rid of that issue. Here's a link if you want to check it out. Hey, future web here. Uh, so I actually kind of regret putting this in because I was later told that by putting this in, there's a good chance that Bandai do something to screw over Remix. So if that happens, Kuro, I'm very sorry. Shinso assist. Currently in My Hero 1's Justice 2, Shinzo's assist is the best and most overpowered assist in the entire game, to the point where he is banned from every kind of tournament. This is because his brainwashing gives the person using him a free combo, and it is extremely hard, if not impossible, to escape from after being knocked down. And now we move on to character changes. There are some characters in My Hero 1's Justice 2 that are too powerful and need a nerf, because most of the roster can't keep up with them, and some that are too weak and cannot be played in tournaments, if you want to Win. Here are the characters that need the most big changes in our opinion. Here was our first problem. Originally, we had written things down like increase sleep stacks or add more end lag to PU1. I thought this was okay, but I was completely wrong. Later, Ichunka told me that if we sent this, it would have been very disrespectful because in their eyes, we're basically telling them, hey, Biking, you did a bad job. Fix this. We're going to tell you everything you need to fix because you messed up. So instead, me and Ichunka reworded everything in a way that would be more respectful to the developers. So instead of telling them what we want changed specifically, we pointed out why certain characters are better or worse than others. Midnight. Midnight's sleep gimmick is too 
too strong. This is most obvious with her Air Quirk 3, Cosmopolitan. Even if you block or just guard this attack, the sleep gimmick still affects you, and even without the sleep, she's also super oppressive. Her Air Quirk 1 hi-hat is super fast, and it has a big hitbox, and is very hard to punish. Her Quirk 3 is also super oppressive, which makes her one of the best, or the best characters in the game. It's super easy to pressure your opponent with her, and when she pressures you, it's super easy for her to open up your guard because of her sleep gimmick, All Might. All Might can currently guarantee a combo off Quirk Special 1, Texas Smash. This hits close enough in the air and on the ground, making this move very oppressive and giving All Might a huge advantage when he lands this move. The reason the move is so good is because when it lands, it stuns you for long enough to give you All Might the opportunity to combo you without spending meter. Another change we would like to see with All Might is his Quirk Special 2, Carolina Smash. Whether it's intentional or not, his Quirk 2, while in use, makes him invulnerable to pretty much all attacks until it's over. This means that currently, when using this move, All Might cannot be hit or stopped by any attack, even plus ultras. In the first ones just this game, this attack was not as strong as now because it was an armored move instead of being invincible. All Might also has a loop, which is the most frequent one we see in ranked in tournaments. It is done by press This one loop can do upwards of 16k, which is over 50% of your health. I've left a link below to a video of this loop to show you how easy it is to do. Obviously, I'm going to blur out this link because I kind of don't want everybody doing this loop. It's dumb. Himiko Toga. Toga is one of the best zoners in the game. The fact that she can cancel her Quirk Special 1, Bloodsucker Attack, into Quirk Special 3, Thousand Knives, makes her able to zone you while being super safe. She forces you to play passive and is super strong. Her Quirk Special 1, Bloodsucker Attack, has one of the best priorities in the entire game. Very good tracking and gives you a big reward. The Transformation gimmick is one of the strongest gimmicks in the entire game because it removes the assists from the opponent and gives them to Toga, and she can use them to be very oppressive and go out of a combo. In the current meta, where assists are almost as important as the character you play, this gives her a huge advantage for a move with almost no risk that you can do mid-combo, making her one of the best characters in the game. Toga's charged Quirk 3 special deals a lot of guard damage and chip damage. That allows her to zone and get rewarded for it with guard bricks and chip damage, while making it super hard for the opponent to approach her due to its low end lag. For those of you that aren't too sure what end lag is, it's the time from doing one attack to the start of another attack. It's that in between time. Some moves have more end lag than others. A good example of this would be Aizawa's Q2. If his Q2 clashes with another attack, the end lag on it is so long that it basically guarantees a free combo to whoever he's fighting. Inasa. Inasa has been a very strong character since the beginning of the game because he has very good zoning tools that are hard to punish and they all give big reward. His Quirk Special 3 in the air, Quirk Special 4, Zephyr Bolt, and Quirk Special 2, Squall, in the air are all very easy to land, hard to punish, and he can do some big combos with them afterwards. His yellow attack in the air is also super strong because it has a fast startup time and can lead to some devastating combos if cancelled out of. All those tools make Inasa a character are very hard to approach and punish, which forces you to play passive and wait for him to make a mistake. Mei Hatsume. Mei is one of the hardest characters to punish in the entire game. It's almost impossible to approach her safely, no matter who you play. She is the only character in the game which can dash cancel a yellow move on whiff. Her air yellow move, which is already really oppressive, and is also safe too because of that. Her quirk special 4, bomb present, can be spammed if it's not charged, which is really oppressive and really hard to punish, which makes her almost impossible to approach. Her quirk special 3 also has a really fast startup and is a really oppressive tool too, because she can deflect projectiles with it, which makes her more unique. But this move can also be cancelled on whiff, so she won't be stunned at the end, which makes this move really safe and really oppressive. Hawks. For the longest time before Midnight came out, Hawks was considered the best character and while over time people have learned how to counter some of his stuff, a lot of it is still too good and very hard if not impossible to counter. Like his Air Quirk 1 Slicing Wind, which is a very low wrist projectile for a decent reward and is very difficult to punish. Another thing which makes Hawks really strong is his dash. Hawks can control the direction of his dash and the community loves it, but he can also use his Quirk 1 Slicing Wind while dash 
smashing, which is gonna make him always have the priority and be really oppressive when he approaches you, and he is gonna get a big reward after it. Hoax also has a loop which is a lot like All Might's loop and is very easy to do, and is done by pressing This loop does upwards of 11k damage which is roughly 20% of your health. Seiji Seiji is a character that is really strong because he can apply pressure with his quirk special one while doing other actions that give him guaranteed grabs and make some of his unsafe moves safe. On top of that, he can use his quirk special one to skip a turn by pressing it just before getting hit, which allows him to get combos after getting hit, which makes him a really difficult character to approach for most of the characters in the game. And now we move on to the buffs. Overhaul V2 Overhaul V2 has never been one of the best characters and for the longest time has been considered by many to be one of the worst in the game. The changes we would like to see made to him is so that Overhaul V2 could keep up with other characters in the roster. A few patches ago, Overhaul V2 could wall splat his opponents with his quirk special one, Next Skewer, but this was changed at some point and since then he has been significantly worse since he no longer has ways to extend his combos from this attack without assists. His quirk special one, Next Skewer and quirk special three rain skewers cannot be dash cancelled out of like other characters who have similar zoning attacks meaning that if he misses his attack he is super easy to punish 100% Deku 100% Deku is considered by many the worst character in the game because he struggles a lot at applying pressure and opening your guard. He has super slow ground jabs and fast air jabs which make him a character that is played almost only in the air so he can't deal with characters with good anti-air. In the air he has no way to apply pressure because he has no true block strings. After the first jab you can dodge and punish him no matter which move he wants to cancel to or if he wants to continue with another jab. It's the same for his second jab. Jab. His air special quirk 4 is super slow, Orlando Smash, which makes it very easy to react to and almost useless. His yellow attack also has a slow startup and a very bad track in, which makes it very easy to punish and almost never used at high level outside of combos. His only two good abilities to open the guard are his PU2, which deals a lot of guard damage but won't be gotten often, and his ground quirk 4, Orlando Smash. But 100% Deku is a really bad character while he is on the Grand, Fat Gum. Fat Gum is a character who has a super cool gimmick which is the transformation gimmick. He is a weak character that becomes strong when he's transformed. The biggest problem with Fat Gum is after you transform there is a glitch which causes to reset the scaling after being wall splatted which makes it not always worth it to go for the transformation and also to make the transformation happen you have to work super hard. You either need a PU2 or a quirk special 3 IBM absorb which can be punished easily if your opponent sees it coming and Fatgum can't get big damage without spending a lot of meter, which makes it harder to get his transformation. Tomaki. Some of Tomaki's combo routes are inconsistent. For example, if you try and do a quirk special for Octopus Whip into plus ultra 1, sometimes the plus ultra 1 will not land. This also happens if you are mid combo with Tamaki and try to do quirk special 3 chicken spike into quirk special 2 clam armor. Regardless of how you try to time these combos, there is no guarantee they will work. Something else about Tamaki is that over the years, he has had some of his combo routes limited or taken away without anything being added, which makes him feel like a hollow character with incomplete combos. Another Another thing with Tamaki is his neutral. Currently, Tamaki can only punish the opponent if he is being approached. Tamaki himself does not have the tools to apply pressure without being punished for it, making his playstyle essentially wait around until your opponent attacks, which is not a fun playstyle and not the way he was intended to be played. And now for the final one, Kochigi. Kochigaraki is a character that is not great in neutral. His air jab is not used often to start combos because it's slow and has bad tracking. The armor of his ground armor move disappears before the hitbox comes out, which makes it a bad armor move that people don't go for often because it can lose to a jab. His red move is also not that hard to dodge and he can't get any follow up after it without some very specific assists. Here are the main problems that we think are in the current matter of My Hero 1's Justice 2. Thank you for reading throughout this document and we look forward to seeing what you do in the future. 
And that was the latter. I personally think we have a very good chance of this being implemented into the game, just because Biking is still doing stuff with My Hero 1's Justice 2, like this new crossover event with My Hero Ultra Rumble, or the events they've been doing the last few months to get the Vigilante costumes. Sure, it's not new characters, but it's better than them doing nothing at all. And again, one more time, I'd like to thank all of you for coming together one more time and just making the best patch we possibly could. Without you guys, we have no community, and with no community, games die fairly quickly. So just again, thank you. Just thank you for being part of this wonderful community. And I hope we'll be around three, four years to come. Unless OJ3 gets announced, of course, then we can all move over to that game. But yeah, guys, that's it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time.